Welcome to Pentecost 11. Here are your announcements. We continue to have three worship options uh, every week, uh, and this is one of them on recording. And the other two are on Saturday night at 6 outside Advent Church and Sunday morning at 9.30 in person inside Advent Church. We hope you'll join us, continue to join us for one of those each week. The quarterly giving statements were mailed earlier this week. So keep an eye out in your mailbox if you have given an offering to the church and have not received your statement by August 20th please contact the church office and so a new statement can be mailed to you. If you'd like to sponsor altar flowers, bulletins, please contact uh, Becca in the church office during office hours. Um, multiple people can sponsor flowers and or bulletins and you can split the cost. The cost for altar flower is up to you based on the arrangement that you select from the florist. We have reevaluated the cost of bulletins and are now offering a discounted rate at $25 a week for sponsorship. We are accepting non-perishable food donations for the Free Little Pantry and cereal donations for the Wilson Food Pantry. Donations can be dropped off at the church office during regular business hours or brought to, with you in person to our in-person worship services. Please make sure all donations are not expired. There is one more chance to shop the book sale in support of the Minneapolis-bound youth who are going to the Churchwide Youth Gathering next summer. And that is Sunday, August 15th. It'll be an Advent members only sale immediately following our indoor worship service at 930. And you'll be able to go over in the Memorial Hall and fill a bag for five bucks. Uh, hope you able, you're able to participate in that. If you or your family are sick, hospitalized, or in need of pastoral care, please contact the church office or me at the church office. Uh, if you're hospitalized, the hospital can contact us. Uh, just let the nurse know that you'd like to have Advent Church notified. And of course, if there's been a death in your family, please let us know. If anyone has any announcements we'd like to include in this space here, um, make sure they're in the church office by Wednesday morning so they can be printed it up so I can try to read them as they appear. Now, let's begin our worship with a prelude. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, that strengthened by this food, 
we may live in his body and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. Is it enough now, O Lord? Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. The word of the Lord. Second reading is Ephesians chapter 4. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, with which you are marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. 
Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me and I will raise that person on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes and has eternal life, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Did you, did you feel that? Did that seem a little like deja vu? Like you had heard that before? Well, you did. This is almost identical to the gospel from last week. Should I begin again? How is your appetite? Remember how I started that sermon and I talked about the appetites of the people and how they weren't in line with what Jesus was offering, but their own appetites. Huh? Remember that? The same issues are brought forth in this gospel reading. It is just the next verses that go after last week's reading. So it sounds familiar because it is familiar. But here's what's different. But I have a suggestion because we've been talking about the bread of life. Uh, and I'll talk about the difference in a moment. We've been talking about the bread of life and how we need to consume who Christ is. And the, the psalm that we're using today is Psalm 34, verses 1 to 8. Now, you may not have that in front of you, but it's, it's a familiar, the verse 8 is a familiar verse. Here it is. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. When we meet for worship at church and on Saturday night, I will use that as a response. I will say, taste and see that the Lord is good. And the people will respond, happy are they who take refuge in our God. And that is, that is what I want to do with you. I want to remind you that throughout this sermon, that we're being asked to taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. So back to the difference between last week and this week. You'll remember that Jesus was talking to the crowds last week. The crowds who, who had won uh, two weeks ago had followed him along the side of the, the seashore uh, at, the, uh, at Galilee, and they were there before he got there in the boat. And then last week they crossed the Sea of Galilee right after him, tracked him down and said, how'd you get here? Well, they knew that. But these people just want to be with Jesus. They want to hear more. Actually, what they want, they've had their fill, and they're looking for another free lunch. And Jesus is saying, it's not just what you put in your stomach. It's what you put in your heart. The bread of life is not so much pumpernickel, but it's the peace of God. And so these people have a great desire to follow Jesus. But what we hear today is, 
and it starts out with the words, Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Now, in the Gospel of John, when it says the Jews, it is shorthand for the Jewish authorities. That is to say, the leaders of the synagogue, the Sanhedrin, uh, the Pharisees, those who are in charge of the religious order and who pretty much say how things are going to be religiously and who take offense at this Jesus who not only comes in and preaches things that don't sound like the usual stuff, but then he refers to himself as the bread that comes down from heaven. And their first complaint in the gospel here is, oh, we know his parents. How can he say he came down from heaven? And what they don't realize is that there is, that is the truth. They're only looking at what's in front of them. But John, the gospel writer, has helped us from the very beginning to understand who Jesus is. Because John is the gospel that begins with the words, In the beginning was God, and the Word was with God, and the beginning was Word, was the Word, and the Word became flesh. And Jesus is the Word that becomes flesh. Jesus is God become flesh. In the Gospel of Matthew, he's referred to as Emmanuel, God with us. And so we have Jesus identifying himself as the one who will give life to the world. Now, we're not talking so much about physical life because we know that his time on earth is limited and certainly because he's now saying the things he's saying, it's going to be shortened because these are the authorities, the Jews who are in authority, who will bring him great suffering in the days ahead. And so Jesus responds to their complaints that, oh, we know your parents. He says, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that everyone has seen the Father, but I have seen the Father. I tell you, whoever believes and has eternal life, I am the bread of life. And then in the same way that those who last week said, show us what you're going to do. Our ancestors ate bread in the wilderness. God gave us bread in the wilderness. Jesus is cutting off the Jewish authorities before they even suggested. He said, your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. <laughs> this is the bread, that is to say, who Christ is. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I believe this is lost on the Jewish authorities because they're still thinking of temporal existence, that is to say, in this life. And it's not simply with this life. Eternal life for Jesus is not just the lengthening of time, but it's a more of an intensity of time. Eternal life for Jesus is a quality, not a quantity. Eternal life is what we are given in Christ, and incidentally, not when we die, but already we have received grace upon grace in Jesus Christ. And the eternity of your life in Christ has already begun. When did that happen? When he rose from the tomb. This is the message of God for us in the eternity of God's love. He rescues Christ, draws him out of the grave so that we may follow where he leads the way. 
This is the eternity of God's grace. So the difference between last week and this week is the crowd that Jesus spoke to last week desperately wants to talk to him, desperately wants to be fed by him. And the crowd he talks to this week, the religious authorities, desperately wants him gone. They don't want anything to do with him. And they are totally offended and complaining. There's one more individual in our lessons today who is, I think, worth mentioning. In the first reading today from 1 Kings 19, we have the story of Elijah. We don't have the story, we just have a piece of the story. Remember how it was read that uh, Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. The man is just disheartened. He's also terrified. And we don't know from reading this why. But I'll tell you why. And you'll, you'll recognize this story. Elijah just defeated the prophets of Baal. And he had a tremendous victory. But because he had the victory over the prophets of Baal, Queen Jezebel, who worshipped Baal, promised to kill Elijah because he killed her prophets. And she's coming after Elijah. So what's he going to do? He's going to sit under a broom tree and ask to die because he's afraid and he's no better than his ancestors. Never mind the fact that he was victorious over the prophets of Baal. And then... What happens? Suddenly an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a caked bread, a, a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank and went, and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to, the, to Horeb, the Mount of God. It goes on. He's got so much to do. The angel tells him he's got a king to, to, uh, to consecrate. He's got things to do for the, for the nation. And he's got work to do. he got to get up and eat. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Taste and see, Elijah. Don't be so afraid. God is going to do things for you and with you in the days ahead. I bring Elijah into this story because I think there are certain ways that we approach Jesus. And it's always interesting to ask yourself, where do I fit in the gospel? Where do I fit in the Bible story? And sometimes we are the crowd. Oh, Jesus, give me what I need. But Jesus says, what you want may not be what you need. So we have to be careful about being the ambitious crowd who likes what we like when we like it, and step back and open ourselves to what God is able to do when we are open to the bread of life. That's first. We could be just a little too ambitious. Second, we could be like the Jewish authorities, knowing just the way things should be, the old expression, my mind's made up, don't confuse me with the truth. Hmm? And that's the Jewish authorities. Jesus, you're not going to tell us anything different because we know what's right and that's it. And uh, 
I'm not proud to say that there are times in my life where I probably have not paid attention to what God is doing because I pretty much think I know what's going on. And you know the old story is you tell God your plans and then you can hear God laugh. And then there are times when you and I are crawled up under a broom tree like Elijah. Many good things have happened in our life, but there may be one thing that's really bugging us. And whatever it is has us completely at a loss. And we don't think there's anything left for us to do or know better than our ancestors. And we crawl ourselves up in a fetal position and think there's nothing left to do. And an angel of the Lord, and I don't know who that angel is for you. If you think about it, there have been angels of the Lord. And what's an angel? Literally, in the scriptures, the word angel means a messenger. Who is the messenger in your life who has said, get up and eat? <laughs> Boy, those are, those are words that sound so much like everybody's mother. Get up and eat. Eat something. It'll help you. It's like, it's like the gospel was written for Berks County. But you have had messengers in your life when you've been crawled up who have given you the bread of life. Life more than sustenance, but spiritual grace that you need. This is what God is doing for us. Whether we're a little too ambitious, whether our mind's made up, or whether we're feeling like there's nothing left. A good friend of mine who's a rabbi once told me that every celebration in the Jewish faith is basically the same thing. They tried to kill us, but they didn't. Let's eat. <laughs> I love that. They tried to kill us, but they didn't. So let's eat. Food is not just sustenance, but is a statement about the life that we are given. Because we are no longer on death's door or even on a journey toward death. Because the eternity of God's life has been given to us in Jesus Christ already. So that when we breathe our last... We don't have to think about what's next. We are in the arms of a loving God. I'm not afraid. I'm not ready. I'm kicking and screaming all the way. But when that moment comes, I am in the arms of a loving God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He, is a, he will come again to judge the li living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all creation. For the Church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel. For congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation. For shade, shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun for lakes, rivers, oceans, contaminated by pollution, and all who lack clean water, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice for corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about their future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, for all who are sick this day, especially those we name before you now. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are gathered by this broadcast, we pray. For those in our congregation who prepare for the communion celebration and for all who assist in producing this broadcast, as well as those leading in-person worship at Advent Church. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for our bishops, Elizabeth and Christopher, for the congregations of the West Berks Mission District, especially for Pastor Jim Farnsworth, the Church Council and other leaders and members of St. Mark Lutheran Church in Birdsboro as they serve in your name. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.